The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Sometimes if you want to make a good habit, you need to have reminders. One of my daughters, her name is Sandra. She's our youngest daughter. She's not just mine. She's Dave's too. I act like these are all my kids. <laughs> you know me, the choleric personality. It's mine. Everything's mine. So she, her love language, how many of you know what a love language is? That means it's, it's the way that people speak to you that make you feel loved. So, uh, and different peoples are different. Some people, you give them a gift, they feel loved. Some people, you give them a compliment and they feel loved. Well, we normally try to give people what we need, but most of the time it's not what they need. So they feel like we're not giving them anything, and we feel like we're trying so hard to give them everything, and they're never satisfied no matter what we give them, but they don't need what you need. You need to take the time to find out what they need and give that to them, and that is real love. And a lot of times, what they need you to give them is not something that's gonna come to you naturally. So that means you're gonna to have to farm a new habit. So my daughter Lee needs a lot of encouragement because her love language are words of encouragement. Her husband, however, doesn't speak her language. <laughs> How many of you feel like you're married to someone who does not speak your language? Okay. So after them having several heated conversations and several tearful bouts, he got smart. He started putting reminders on his phone and pop-up messages in his computer. Encourage Sandra today. <laughs> now, my two top love languages are gifts of service, I mean acts of service. Man, if you want to get on my good side, just do something for me that needs to be done. Just get it off of me so I don't have to mess with it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to have to do it. I just want to pray and study and write and preach and teach. That's what I want to do. That's my passion. So anybody that does any of the rest of the stuff, they just get on my good side. The second thing is gifts. So now, Dave, just a word of advice. Put a reminder in your phone. <laughs> and, and every day, just say, honey, what can I do for you today? What do you need done that I could do for you today and then run out and get me a gift and you'll be in good shape? <laughs> how many of you wish that, that, how many of you ladies wish that the person you're married to would put reminders on their phone? You know, I thought, I was proud of him for doing that. Oh, get out of here. I ask you what your love language is and you don't even know, let alone anybody else. <laughs> you ask him, what would you like? Uh -huh. Give him a compliment. He's, like, mm -hmm. He's so secure. I'm still trying to figure out what it is. I do think it's encouragement. So let's all encourage Dave. Come on, give Dave a good <laughs> But see, if you want to make good habits, don't be bashful. I mean, write notes all over your house if you have to. Put notes all over your house. Go out and get a sign painted if you have to. Do warfare. If you think, well, I try to remember, but I just can't. Well, then don't, don't have a room in your house where you don't have a note that reminds you to do the right thing, and then pretty soon you'll be able to start taking some of those down. It's just all part of renewing your mind. Who am I kidding? This place is a mess. But no, Patty. Patty's house is pretty. Patty's house is clean. But no, not me. I'm the one who can't keep it together. I'm always late and always messy. Stop running! I think I'm the worst mother in the world. Let me check. Ah! Yep. Oh, come on. You know better than to think like this. What did Joyce say to do? Yeah.
Hey, babe, I'm home. Whew, you not believe the day I had today. Yeah, something's going on. I had computers that weren't working right. Then I had printers that weren't working right. I had to do a court out. The court wouldn't work right. I had to do so many other people's jobs. And... What'd you do today? Hey, Mom, can I get a glass of milk? Sure. Um, where's the refrigerator? Oh, wow, that is a bit much. Well, just one more won't hurt anything. Rhonda's husband drank several glasses of whole milk a day. She got very concerned because he had a little more weight on him than she wanted him to have, and she knew his cholesterol intake was too much, and he was getting older now. So she started adding a little bit of skim milk to the carton and pouring out a little bit of the whole milk. And she did this over a period of time, a couple months, two, three months. All of a sudden, he was drinking all skim milk. She tried to give him a glass of whole milk, and he didn't like it. I'm trying to tell you that your body only has the ability to love what you let it get used to. Okay, you say, I do, I, I do want to make some good habits, and there are some bad habits I'd like to, to break, and so I'm hearing you to break those bad habits. I've got to make good habits, so when shall I start? <laughs> well, how about the first of the year? <laughs> no, 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 no. Now is the time of salvation. <laughs> now is the time. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not yesterday or tomorrow. Right now, we believe that God can deliver us. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as they did in the rebellion. Today, if God is speaking to you through what I'm saying, then I would not even say, I'm going to wait till next week. I'm going to wait till Monday. I'm going to wait till after the holidays. You know, if there's something you're addicted to and you brought it with you, you're more than welcome to walk up here and put it on this altar before you leave tonight. I'd love to see this place just filled with all kinds of stuff. And I tell you, we've done it before and had some interesting stuff. I mean, I, I've had people come into the meeting with, with their booze, certain cigarettes, their drug paraphernalia, all kinds of stuff. And there's no better time than to do it now, however, I do want to say this. Don't do it until you count the cost. There's no point in doing it emotionally. Yes, this is so good. Praise God. I'm an guy. Woo! I love this choice. Yes, throwing my stuff on the altar. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's just say that... Um, that you decide that you want to, you're, you're really gonna get your body in shape and you're gonna, you're gonna start eating healthy and you're gonna lose weight and you're gonna, you know, break the habit of doing bad things. Well, what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna be hungry for a while. <laughs> and your flesh is gonna have a fit. It's gonna go. I never get to have anything. <laughs> I had somebody say the other day, I wish God would have made just one food that I like that had no calories in it. <laughs> just one free food, God, please. Anything that we, all we could eat and not, not celery either or lettuce. <laughs> Something good. All right. What happens if you decide that you're going to quit smoking? Now, apart from getting a miracle from God, which some people do, but I didn't, so I can only tell you my experience. First of all, you're going to have nicotine withdrawal, and it won't be horrible. You'll survive it. Every day it gets easier, but the first few days, you'll have cigarettes on your mind all day long. And your, your flesh is going to say, I can't stand it. I can't do it. I can't do this. I'm a nervous wreck. I want to eat everything I get my hands on. <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. Make it through one day. Go to the next day. It may not even get too much easier the second day, but I can tell you by the end of the first week, it's going to be getting easier. Now, if you make it through 30 days, I can tell you it's probably not going to bother you at all. 
The only thing that will happen is maybe for even two or three years when you get under a pressure situation, you may find yourself subconsciously looking for a cigarette. I did because that's just what you're used to doing. Okay, now what will be the benefits if you say we're to quit smoking? And let me tell you, I'm not picking on smoking because I think that's, I mean, gossip is just as bad. So I'm not, you know. Well, the benefits, you're gonna save money. You know, when I started smoking as a kid, cigarettes were 25 cents a pack. Well, that's long since gone away. I have no idea what they are, but I know they're not 25 cents a pack. You won't smell like smoke. <laughs> and I don't wanna get myself in trouble to hurt anybody's feelings, but I'll tell you what, when we smoke, we don't know how it smells. But when you don't, I mean, I'm just saying, when you don't. <laughs> hey, I love you. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I could probably really get myself in trouble, so I just might as well go ahead and say, I don't know the smoking will keep you out of heaven. I think people do a lot worse things. The Bible says a whole lot about overeating, doesn't say nothing about smoking. But if you do quit, you won't have to be afraid of getting lung cancer. That'd be a cool benefit. Yeah. My father smoked three packs of cigarettes a day all of his life, and he had terrible lung problems. And so I smoked for a lot of years. I haven't smoked now for like 35, 36 years. And it was worth it. It's worth it not to do it. Now, if you, you know, if you don't want to quit, then don't quit. That's between you and God. God was convicting me to quit. And you know, when I started teaching, I sat and taught in short shorts and smoked cigarettes the whole time I was teaching. But that might not work here tonight, so, you know. I wanted to kind of move on with God, and I had to lay down a few things that wouldn't have been just really cool with most people, so. Amen. Oh, and by the way, I was anointed when I did it, too. <laughs> see, God doesn't just see where you're at, He sees where you're gonna be. So, so what happens? How many of you know you should be working out? <laughs> okay. Well, I started six years ago. I've not having done it all my life. And I can promise you that I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I went to the gym and this trainer, I said, you're going to give me a program and then I'm going to go home and do it. Well, that didn't work. I had to get the trainer all the time because I needed help. But Anyway, I didn't know that they gave me one program for one day and then one, a different program for the next day. So, you know, there's supposed to be like 45 minute workout sessions. Well, I didn't know. I thought I had to do it all every day. So I went home with all this stuff. I mean, I was 64 when I started. I'd never worked out in my life. And I'm exercising an hour and a half a day. I had to fall on the toilet and pray to be able to get off. I mean, I would just like, I would go, go. Oh. 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 I mean, it was bad. I mean, I told my chiropractor, because the gym is where the chiropractor's at, I said, I feel sick. He said, oh yeah, you might feel that way for a while. So I can tell you what, if you've never done it, you're gonna be sore. It's gonna take time. It may cost you a little money if you're gonna join a gym. If you wanna get a trainer, it's even gonna cost more money. But let's talk about the benefits. We always think about what's it gonna